Please welcome Vice President of Vacation Rental Partner Success for Expedia Group, Tim Rosolio, and co-founder of Onera and co-founder of Oasi, Ben Wolf, in conversation with Skift Editor-in-Chief, Sarah Cope. So I'm gonna kick it right off. Who is the modern traveler to both of you? Yeah, so I think about the modern traveler in terms of what they want primarily, and, and what the modern traveler wants is one-of-a-kind experiences, they want shareable, Instagrammable moments, and they want to feel a genuine connection, I would say, to the property origin story or maybe the founder or the team even that, that supports the property. Um, and you know, we, we're, we find and we've seen this historically that people love people. They typically like brands and often detest businesses. So the more we can put people attached to a property um, and give it a personality and a story, um, the better we perform in reviews and just the better the overall experience and it kind of pulls them in. So um, that's what the modern traveler is looking for and we're trying to deliver it. When we think about archetype of the modern traveler, we have, we have some fun with that. It's you know, trendsetter, somebody that within a friend group, you, know, you might look to for what are the novel, unique experiences um, and, and get advice from that person. They might go to you know, Art Basel or Coachella, but Coachella might not be cool enough anymore. Um, maybe they drive a Tesla or, or wear an Apple Watch. Um, so that's, that's kind of like the archetype of, of what, we're, what we're going after and who is helping promote like, our properties. That, so yeah. why, don't you, why don't you tell everybody a little bit about your properties? Ben makes tree houses. So. I build tree house hotels, yeah. 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 <laughs> so um, yeah, so we built Onera, which is um, a treehouse hotel brand in the Texas Hill Country. Um, we have one, soon to be two locations. We actually sold one to a public REIT, which is kind of cool. Institutional stamp of approval on a treehouse hotel was, was fun. Um, and also have a um, Owasi, which is an experiential hospitality firm that I uh, co-founded and, and the CEO of. And we do development, uh, management, and marketing for hotels and unique stays that are made for the modern traveler. And so what's uh, the modern traveler like at Expedia? Yeah, so I think um, plus one to a lot of things Ben said, like th they're looking for that narrative, for that emotive, emotive way of us speaking to them and inspiring them to travel. But I think for us, it's just a little bit of a different angle, right? Like, hey, like tree houses, um, houses that uh, have um, you know uh, hot air balloons, they're taking the, the the house into into the air. Like that's not really what we do. What we do is we generally you didn't do... have anyone in mind when you thought about no, that. Yeah, I okay, have... just just checking. No, yeah. I it just came came to mind. Yeah. I don't know yeah, where yeah, that yeah. came from. Um, you know what we generally focus on is families and groups, and that's families and groups that are typically going uh, to the to the beach or to the lake or to the ski mountain, um, but that being said, people are still certainly interested in um, that emotive way that we can really capture new travelers. And like the way I think about it is, um, so much of what we've been talking about today is about the last 25 or 30 years of vacation rentals. But the vacation rentals have been around forever. Like I, when I was a kid, I'd grow up and I'd go to vacation rentals, and probably the way that my parents got quote unquote inspired was by <laughs> leafing through um, a pamphlet that a property manager sent to them. And we found the perfect home uh, in Ocean City, Maryland, or the Outer Banks of North Carolina. And then probably the way that I uh, was inspired was I'd poke around on Google, um, you know, I'd read about different destinations, the activities that are there. You know, hopefully one way or another, I was then directed to, to Verbo or HomeAway at the time, uh, and then I make my booking there. But what we're finding is that there's, all, there's this entire generation. If I look at my four-year-old niece and nephew, they're twins, they're great. They've had tablets their entire lives. They've engaged with things via this digital media their entire life, and as such, the way that they connect especially via social, what we find is Gen Z, and they're like the, the, the yeah. earliest stage of Gen, Gen Z, right? They seek out inspiration um, for travel 75% of the time 
via Instagram and almost 50% of the time on TikTok. Like this is the way they consume information. Um, and I think as an industry, we need to lean into that. One of the things that Expedia is doing is we're starting with our travel shops, which are yeah. um, shops that influencers can set up to really speak to the emotive experience they have surrounding recommendations for traveler. And um, people can click on those links. They can book it on Expedia or Verbo or hotels.com. And those influencers actually get paid for it. So we're yeah. really leaning into that social ecosystem because we know that um, all those kids that had the tablet in their hand when they're three or four years old, a lot of them are probably old enough now that they're booking their own travel. And if they are not old enough to book their own travel, they sure as hell are influencing their parents on where they should go. Yes, I like this winter when it was cold, the kids would like, mine are uh, 12 and nine, and they would like climb into the bed and like mirror the tablet to TikTok to look at like videos of Mexico and the Caribbean, right? So to try to guilt us to like go there. But for them, it was always TikTok. It wasn't Instagram. I, I thought it was interesting that you said that it was more Instagram than TikTok for your set. Uh, probably depends on the age. Yeah, yeah. Right, you know? The um, older is. Older is probably a little more Instagram. Yeah. Younger is probably a little more TikTok, but yeah. an interesting follow up, right? Yeah. What And what about you? What, what social networks are your modern travelers posting to? So we're primarily focused on Instagram and, okay. and what we're seeing, you know, Gen Alpha is not quite booking on Aris days. It's, yeah. it's not adults only, but certainly geared towards couples getaways. Um, so we're not as much, you know, targeting them, but we're ready for them once they become of age. Um, what we see is, I think actually Gen Z is closer to 85% is getting inspiration from social media and Instagram, TikTok. Um, and, you know, something like 97% of them are posting during their trip and like two thirds to three quarters of them are posting every day. Um, so it would, I mean, it's, it's amazing from the standpoint of they want stays that, like I said before, are shareable, that they yeah. are easy to, you know, take amazing video of, amazing photos of, and then post it. And then they're doing a lot of our marketing for us, yeah. which is pretty amazing. Um, and Instagram is our number one uh, booking channel. So we drive, over 80% of our bookings month over month now, and it's pretty much exclusively Instagram. We don't do much on TikTok yet. Um, it's it's on the the, the roadmap, but yeah. but Instagram, you know, we've had so much success with that we're continuing to kind of perfect that. Um, and it's you know those social media to direct bookings are really amazing for three three reasons. So one, the obvious one is the OTA fee savings. Um, so instead of uh, <laughs> instead of a 17%, you know, between host and guest for some of them, maybe you're paying a, you know, 3% payment processing fee and we achieve price parity. Um, so we're scooping the 14% and it's leading to, you know, some of the highest margins, at least in hotels, we're in like the mid fifties in terms of NOI margin, which is very high for hotels. Um, and another one is you're reaching an aspirational buyer. So they're, they're emotional. You know, they, they see like one of our custom tree houses that they love and they have a dopamine rush and they're basically high, right? Clicking on that and, and then they're very price insensitive. So, you know, they might be, they don't care if it's $600 or $800 as, as long as they have the means to pay. Whereas if you're on an OTA, I mean, you're price shopping. It's just a different experience. And I think that there's certainly a, a time and a place for that. If you have a very specific set of things that you need, you're going to a specific destination, it's important to be able to filter for all of that. And you know, I think families is a great example. Yeah. Um, and, and be able to price shop and compare to get value. But for our customer, we're definitely selling the dream. And then it's about, OK, how do we deliver the best experience we can once they come on site? Yeah. So depending upon who you talk to, uh, the quote unquote experiences market is you know the great nut to crack in hospitality. It's the next billion dollar business, uh, I think is what Brian Chesky had, had told me once. So what's your take? Do you buy that? Like, do you, do you think that that, that that is really like the next big thing? And how are, if so, how are you both leaning into that? I would, you know, I think from an Expedia perspective, um, we have an activities business. It's a growing activities business. It's a combination of um, some of our own sort of directly sourced stuff yeah. and then stuff that we pull in via third party inventory. Um, specifically for the short term rental space, I think that what you find is um, some of the uh, inventory that's out there 
is actually quite fragmented and at times maybe not even online bookable. Um, I'm looking around the crowd here. There's a company called Explory um, that actually has done a nice job of aggregating a lot of that inventory and we've been exploring some partnerships with them. Um, but I, mean, I think what you also have to think about in terms of experiences is it's not necessarily always like Dollywood or deep sea fishing or things like that. I mean, what we've leaned into a lot is the idea of people often will book a home uh, that has some sort of outdoor amenity that they don't have at their house. I think our stats said something like 42% of people consider that a big part of the house that they pick. So if you can have that fire pit or you can have that hot tub or you can have that pool, um, that's awesome because what we often find, especially for that family or group gathering, is the most important thing is like, hanging out the house, being together, and enjoying the amenities it has, rather than necessarily the deep sea fishing and Dollywood and going to Disney, even though hopefully maybe you get out of the house and do that for a day too. Yeah. And we, we view it very similarly. I think there's two things. There's the experience of the stay, yeah. and that's how unique the design and the architecture and all of that is. Um, there's the amenities, and then there's the property itself. And then the second piece is, experiences, which we don't have a lot of staff at Onera, um, so most of that is done through third parties, but we've had a lot of success with private chef experiences and in-room massages and romantic packages, but again, it's almost all stuff to stay on property, uh, which is really interesting. Like we, We've had this thought because we have pretty minimal amenities at our properties. They're staffed a little more than short-term rentals in terms of, you know, we do have some on-site staff, but less than most hotels. So we've always thought, okay, we need to be very close to, you know, some significant market. Fredericksburg is the one, our first location, and Wimberley is another quaint town that we're within like a few minutes drive of. But we found a lot of our guests are coming and just staying at Onera, regardless yeah. of the how minimal amenities we may have. They're barely leaving. They're not really, you know, that interested in going to Fredericksburg or the wineries or other things around, and they want experiences brought to them to stay in their exciting treehouse. So we've leaned into that idea, and our next location, which is actually gonna be Awasi branded, is a little bit farther out, but it has the most incredible views that I've seen in Texas, like overlooks a canyon, totally unobstructed, no houses or power lines or anything like that. Um, we'll have this one-of-a-kind water feature, a subterranean spa and gym. So there will be more amenitized because it's a little bit farther out. Um, but we believe that if people find us on Instagram, it, it doesn't matter if it's outside Fredericksburg or outside Wimberley. What matters is it's an hour from Austin or it's yeah. you know three hours from Dallas or whatever it is. It, it's an interesting thought because I think what you're speaking to is what are the right activities for the vacation rental category? Because, and the destinations that we're in as well, because like listen on Viator, get your guide, like maybe people are buying like Madame Tussauds and like, I don't know, like I've on Expedia, I've done the skip the line, take it to the Sagrada Familia and it's awesome. But I was probably staying in a hotel in that destination versus you know what, like the amenity or the, the activity that somebody needs to buy in a vacation rental destination, beach chairs. They need beach chairs and they need Disney tickets and they need skis. Like yeah. that's actually something that's perhaps more catered to our category. And again, could be plugged into social, could be part of, in part of that emotive experience that we're trying to sell. So Expedia has a loyalty program. You, you guys don't, do you, you don't have one. We don't today. Yeah. yeah. Are you gonna have one? So probably not for a while and, yeah. we, and we may not ever, I, I have a, I love points. I amass a lot of points on credit cards. Yeah. My number one criteria with points is actually the breadth of places that I can book. Um, so I wanna be able to book the independent boutique hotel or landscape hotel with my points. Um, and I think Chase does a great job of that. I think Amex does a yeah. great job with that. Um, but I actually think that in a lot of ways, loyalty rewards in hotels is a bit of a transactional relationship and experience. Um, so, you know, basically we're gonna treat you better if you stayed in my hotel 10 times this year versus, I mean, at Onera and our properties, we're trying to create an amazing experience regardless of how many times you've stayed with us. And if we have a more exciting, better room type available day of, maybe we'll just bump you up because regardless of whether you're platinum status or not. So talk me through a little bit why Expedia thinks that the modern traveler really will double down on, on loyalty points and why it's so important to you guys. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, pretty central to our strategy, yeah. really. Um, I mean, what we found is that eight out of 10 travelers 
really don't earn any tangible points or benefits based upon their travel. Um, and you know, a lot of people, I think, when they are thinking about loyalty points, they're thinking about like the movie Up in the Air and the million miler person or the person that I was throughout my 20s and you know, staying in hotels and I was a very loyal Bonvoy member, I guess it was Starwood at the time, but like that is actually not the typical traveler. The typical traveler is somebody who maybe they do um, a handful of leisure trips a year, they do a handful of business trips a year, and they're not accumulating enough points to get like the uber echelon status that perhaps you would get with Bonvoy, but they still wanna get rewarded for that experience and they wanna have really that whole depth and breadth of things to burn those points on. So um, I think that we probably have, and if you really include the 2.5 million vacation rentals we have, we have the greatest selection of where you can earn and burn. And I, I can tell you, when I was in my 20s and I stayed 50 weeks a year in hotels, um, the last place I wanted to go burn points was another hotel. I wanted space, I wanted a vacation rental. I would have, I would have probably earned a lot of points on Expedia, probably would have burned a lot of points on Verbo so I could have that space and that differentiated experience. Do you think that loyalty points are or a loyalty program, points or whatever, is more important to any one like, specific age demographic? Like, is it more popular with the older set than with the younger, than the younger ones? Uh, I haven't seen specific data on that. Um, I mean, I think in particular, it's going to be v valuable to that person that does the, ca the combination of business and leisure, because that's how you actually get the frequency of the trips going that really unlocks the level of points and, you know, in some cases, um, a higher degree of status, which can get you certain deals. I mean, something that we are doing in the vacation rental space is not only offering the one key cash, which is sort of our, our currency for the loyalty program, but additionally, we're gonna start actually trying to source um, member-only deals so that people that are the most valuable travelers that spend a lot of time traveling um, that probably book earlier and stay longer and spend more um, have access. There's a way that they have a benefit of staying in certain vacation rental homes. We're pretty excited about it. Yeah. So anyone in the audience, if you have any questions, send them on in through our own app. Um, curious to hear what you would like to ask these two. But, you know, we've talked a lot about what the... Um, what the modern traveler, like how you guys are serving them and like kind of what's working really well. I'm also, I also want to know what's hard about them. You know, what is, what are the big challenges that you are facing with maybe the, I mean, to use age, like the millennials or the Gen Z set, like what, where do you, what kind of keeps you up at night about them? I mean, for us, I kind of alluded to it already. I mean, we're, we're getting really good at social media and marketing, but that means that the experience has to live up to this incredible yeah. kind of dream picture that we've created. So we're always trying to get better on the operation side. We're always trying to get better in terms of like quality control of the units because you know people come and they have these incredibly high expectations because of you know what we're able to produce and create on social media, and we have to meet them. And thankfully, like by and large, we have. I think one benefit that we have being you know, uh, having a property origin story and, you know, me being out there and being somewhat founder led and, and sort of unveiling the team to some extent and just being a boutique independent property, we have like a 4.8 on Google. And I'm telling you, there's like plenty of branded hotels that are as good at operations as, uh, as us, but they're maxing out at like 4.4 or 4.5. And I think that has to do with, again, it's not a brand or a corporate, it's, it's smaller, more independent. There's a face, a name to it. It's more personal. And I think that you know, people cut you a little bit of slack, A, eh? and it, they also view it as a better experience. And, and we call it that the modern traveler wants to collaborate with you more than just have a transactional relationship and experience. And I think we would think of it less about necessarily age, because what we're really la laser focused on is being the best offering for families. And in my mind, what that means is you might have certain travelers that when you are at a certain age, what you can afford is you can afford a private room or a shared space. And we don't do that. We're not really chasing after that segment. But we would hope that when that person does want the space, they do want 
um, a professional acting property manager. And a professional acting property manager can be formally a, an actual PM or an individual owner that acts professionally, um, that we will have the offering that is the best in the industry. So um, it, it's less about age. It's more about really what we would consider a head pin segment that we're laser focused on. Yeah, so a question from the audience. How does Expedia see key sources of supply, key geographies for supply growth, and potential saturation and overlap between the platforms? Yep, we can take that one. I mean, I think for supply, our entire machine that we use to try to acquire inventory is all based, based upon demand patterns. Um, a high percentage of those demand patterns for our marketplace today are in core ski, ski and beach destinations. However, via all the things that we've been doing surrounding platform convergence, I think that you're gonna see a pretty dramatic uplift in the selling of vacation rentals on Hotels.com, Expedia.com, and our B2B network, where we're actually really putting all of the supply out there on American Express, putting it out there on different travel agent sites. Like there's an opportunity for us to really expand that, de that depth and breadth of where we can actually pull demand from. And like today, it's mostly these ski and beach markets. But if I can get that Traveloka B2B deal humming, you better believe that I'm gonna go source a bunch of Southeast Asian inventory or Australian inventory that we already have on the site and have it show up on Traveloka. It's everything we've been doing has been about really um, taking advantage of the value of the platform rather than individual brands that Expedia has acquired over time. Yeah, we were talking in the green room just before we went on about sustainability and kind of like giving back and like we were talking about water supply. So we had a question from the audience about how are you giving back to your communities, specifically Onera and Wim uh, Wimberley, is that yeah. saying that right? Wimberley, yeah. where guests are staying on your properties. So I'm curious, we talked all, all about it, so why don't you tell the audience? Yeah, ha happy about. to talk about it. I think there's little things of just engaging with the neighborhood and talking to the, the constituents that live around you. Obviously, there's a lot of fear that comes with a, a hospitality property going in and a bunch of guests and more traffic and things like that. Um, so it's, it's hearing them out and them understanding that we're doing everything we can to be environmental stewards, to be you know, minimal impact when it comes to noise, which we are because we're largely a couple's getaway destination. We're not loud. You know, we have na direct neighbors in Fredericksburg at our property there, and they rave about how, how polite and nice our guests are and quiet. Um, and we also think about all this stuff, like how do we integrate the hotel into the landscape so that it's not an eyesore? Because you can see Onera Wimberley from the, you know, as you drive up to Wimberley, as you're in the town in certain areas, you can see our hillside. So we have these tube style treehouse units that kind of poke out from the canopy. We have green roof style units that sort of blend seamlessly into the landscape. And the goal is you know, for, for it to be aesthetically pleasing and additive as opposed to taking away by throwing a bunch of cabins on the side of a hill. Um, and the big one in the hill country is water uh, and water conservation. So we're doing everything we can to conserve water and to, uh, to be environmental stewards in that way. So we're doing uh, uh, gray water reuse and reclaim, recapture to water the green roofs that are narrow Wimberley. Um, we're using only native plantings, so we have minimal irrigation needs to begin with. And at our next property, Awasi, that we're planning and capital raising for right now, our goal is to be at least 50% curtailed on the well water that we need, and, and maybe even closer to 100% through rainwater capture, um, gray water reuse again, and even things like air to water generation. And do you hear from your customers that this is, that this is actually important to them? So we, I don't know if we, we, hear, we hear it directly from them, mm -hmm. but we know that our like ideal customer profile yeah. cares about this kind of stuff. And it's pretty incongruent to be a landscape hotel and just be taking and not trying to give back. So it's, it's a brand ethos thing. And what do you guys do you hear from your customers? All of, all of our yeah. data shows that when you demonstrate that you're doing the appropriate things for sustainability, um, not only is it the right thing to do, but it is an uplifting conversion and therefore drives business value. Great. Well, I can think of no better place to end than that. Thank you both for being here with us today. Great to be here. Thank you. Thank you.